Hello friends, Jen Foxbot here for another edition of Math Mondays. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah! Alright! We are back for another exciting edition of Algebra. Ooh, yay, Algebra! You can never get away from it if you go into the sciences, but it's super useful and I promise it does get easier. In this video, we're going to tackle complex numbers. Um, largely because it's one of the most commonly misunderstood areas of mathematics. And it turns out they're super useful, especially in electricity and magnetism and higher level physics. So it helps to understand what they are and how we use them. So in this video, I'm going to talk about where they came from and what they actually mean, how we define them and, and plot them, and um, some of the basic ways that we do operations with them, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, and um, what was the last one? Oh, I'm spacing. Um, absolute value. I was like, the two lines. What are the two lines called? Absolute value. Yes. So what is the absolute value of a complex number and what does that mean? All right. Cool. So complex numbers. You might have also heard of uh, the term imaginary number, and so that's what we're talking about here. Complex numbers are another way of representing numbers. Um, and so uh, typically you'll see them denoted with a Z like this, A plus B I. Oh, my plus looks like a T. Boop. Um, and so I is our imaginary part, um, or our, our imaginary number. B is our imaginary part. Um, and this is where I'm going to stop and backtrack, because a lot of folks are like, imaginary, it doesn't exist. No, not quite the case. Um, well, not at all the case, actually. So just because we have awkwardly labeled uh, I as imaginary, it does not mean that it's not real. Imaginary numbers exist in the physical world just like regular or real, I'm going to try and do quotes with too many fingers, um, just like the way that real numbers exist. So in the exact same way, let's say A equals 5 and B equals 25, um, A and B are physical quantities. Um, and so to understand that, it helps us to backtrack and think about how we have come up with the number line in the first place. So originally, folks used uh, whole numbers to count. Uh, one, two, three, four, etc. Eventually, they were like, wait, what if you have nothing? What? That's a wild concept. So they threw in zero. Zero was not always included in the way that humans counted. Um, and then you can do, okay, okay, this is cool. You can do addition and subtraction and do some interesting things here. But then someone was like, wait, I gave you, uh, I gave you three apples and you took five. That doesn't make sense because now I have a negative two. Ah! But it's okay, it's okay. All we have to do is recognize that, oh wait, our numbers can go backwards also. We can have negative numbers just like we have positive numbers. Um, and so these are called integers. But then someone was like, wait a second, what if I want to divide five by three? That's not an integer. Ah, folks said again, they freaked out. Oh my gosh, what do we do? And then some smart people are like, it's okay, it's okay. We're just going to add another way of counting. So we're going to include numbers that are in between these integers. Um, so fractions um, or rational numbers as they're sometimes called in the math world. So this idea of expanding the definition of our number system is something we've done for a very, very, very long time, for thousands of years, ever since the Greeks were sitting and pondering over the circumference of a circle, probably way before then. Uh, his, my history knowledge is not as good as my mathematics knowledge. Um, but basically, that's exactly what we did with complex numbers. Mathematicians came to a point where they realized, oh shoot, I need a number 
that equals negative one in this square root. It equals the square root of negative one. Or another way to think about it, if it's squared, then it gives you negative one. So as we're being uh, taught mathematics with the real number line, which are these numbers plus fractions, um, we sometimes would come across this and your teacher was like, don't worry about it. That doesn't exist or uh, it's undefined. But eventually we do have to define it because we need these numbers. They do exist in the physical world. An example uh, that one of my physics professors told us was a catenary, which is the shape that a chain hangs uh, when you suspend it between two points and it's just under its own weight. Um, so to solve the equation for the shape of that chain, you need complex numbers. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, complex numbers show up all the time in solutions to electricity and magnetism. Um, so trust me, imaginary does not mean it doesn't exist. It does exist. It is just an extension of our real number line. Okay, so um, this is the definition of an imaginary number, that the square root, um, we call it I for imaginary, uh, so semantics, again, I feel like at some point maybe we should rename this, but I am not the expert in that field. Um, but anyway, so I is defined to equal the square root of negative one, which means that if you square I, it equals negative one. What happens if you have I cubed? Well, let's break it apart. That means you have I times I squared, which is I times negative one, which is just, I guess I should put parentheses or something, which is just negative I. And since I'm running out of space down there, I to the fourth is I squared, whoops, times I squared, which is negative one times negative one. Oh, I'm gonna fall off the counter, uh, which is just one. So you can do many of the exact same operations, or really all of the same operations with complex and imaginary numbers that we do with real numbers, but you do have to keep track of that, um, of I and how I is defined. Um, so this is the foundation of all imaginary numbers. Okay, what does that look like on a graph? So when we have um, complex numbers, which are composed of a real part and an imaginary part, so we would say the real part of Z is A and the imaginary part of Z is B, um, we can plot it like this. Typically, we put the imaginary number line on the vertical axis and the real number line on the horizontal axis. And these are just gonna be your standard old integers or fractions or whatever. But then you would say these have a little i next to them. Cool, not so bad, right? So then we put zero at the origin and any number, um, let's say we have z1 equals uh, two plus three i. We can plot any complex number on this complex plane. And so we would say, okay, so the real part goes over to two, so that goes to here, and then we go all the way up to three, and that is our z, z1, like that. Not so bad, right? And so in this way, we can understand how different complex numbers are related to each other. So if we have uh, one plus one i, then we're gonna go over to here, and we get a number that's just like that. Um, that's Z2. It's a little Z2. You probably can't see that, but hopefully. Um, and let's say we have Z3, which is 4 plus, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll do 5i. Actually, let's do 2 plus 5i, because why not? 2 to 5. So just like um, when we're looking at equations of a line, when we're looking at um, complex numbers and we plot them like this, we can use this to talk about the size of the real part and the size of the imaginary part. Cool, so that's how we plot real numbers. It's not so bad. Um, all right. Well, how do we do, 
how do we do operations with imaginary numbers? That seems like a little tricky. Um, so to uh, do addition, um, when we're, when we're doing anything with complex numbers, we want to keep the pieces together. So we want to keep the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. So let's say, for example, we have A plus BI plus C plus DI. And we want to say, how do you simplify this? How do you add these two together? Well, you combine the two real parts. So you have A plus C. Um, we'll call this Z, oh, I don't know, Z three just because I don't have a good explanation for that I just picked the number three um maybe we should call it z1 since we're going to talk about a couple of different things that makes a little more sense um okay so and then we combine the imaginary parts together plus um b plus d and then we put the i over here so then if we were to ask what's the real part of z you would say a plus c and if we ask what is the re what is the imaginary part of z one, we would say, what do you think? Yeah, b plus d, capiche? Not so bad. All right. So that is addition. What about subtraction? Um. So this is number two. Number two. Okay. So let's say we have the same thing, but we're gonna subtract it. Well, we just do the exact same thing that we did with addition. We keep the two parts um, separate. Um, we add the, or subtract the real um, numbers together. And so we get Z2 equals A minus C. Um, and then we could say plus um, B minus D I. And again, the real part is gonna be A minus C and the imaginary part is gonna be B minus D. Not so bad, right? Okay, I promise you, complex numbers aren't super, super complicated. It just takes some practice. What about multiplication? Ah, multiplication gets a little bit tricky, but only because it um, requires us to be diligent and to go slow so that we make sure we're getting all the pieces mixed together right. So let's say we have A plus BI times C plus DI. So just like we do when we're multiplying polynomials together, we have to make sure that we get the right mixing. So we do, um, or in other words, we have to make sure that all of the terms are multiplied together. So we wanna do A times C, AC, and then A times DI, ADI plus uh, BCI plus uh, BDI squared. So that's interesting because remember, if I is the square root of negative one, then I squared is, yes, negative one. Boop. So we can simplify this as negative one. Not so bad, right? So now we have, and this is kind of cool because now all of a sudden, BDI squared became a real number. We got rid of its complex part. That's awesome. Okay, um, not that real numbers are any better than imaginary numbers, they're just different and that's okay. So we just have to keep them separate. Okay, so now we have uh, AC. What we're doing now is we're going to combine the real parts of um, Z3 and the imaginary parts of Z3. So first we have AC minus BD because that I squared turned into a negative one. So now we have a negative one multiplied by BD, which is just negative BD. And then we add on um, the imaginary parts together. So plus AD plus BC times I, and this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. Ta-da! Not so bad. All right, so uh, we're coming up on 15 minutes and I haven't quite had time to do absolute value. So I'm gonna run through that real quick and hopefully uh, your brain hasn't exploded quite yet. And if this at any point is too much, sometimes what helps me is pausing the video and coming back at a later point. So if you need to do that, that's totally fine. Give yourself a break when you need it. 
Um, so absolute value or the, the two line thing um, is just um, the square root of both the real and the imaginary parts. And this is actually the exact same definition that we have with um, finding the magnitude of any given line. So um, if this is A and this is B, then Z is there. Oops. Right. <laughs> oh, excuse me, all that chalk dust. Okay, so then this, how do I do this? Okay, this is Z. So it's basically the distance um, of Z. Pretty cool, right? Um, oh, hold on, forgot. Yep. So just like when we have a triangle and we say this is A, B, and C, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared, um, that's basically the exact same thing that is going on here. Pretty cool. All right, so um, hopefully that's pretty clear. I wanna keep this relatively short. Try name for under 20 minutes. Um, yes. All right, so that is an overview of complex numbers. And again, uh, imaginary is only a term. They are actually real. They do exist in this world and they are very useful in mathematics. So don't let the name fool you. You're smart, you use your brain. All right, please let me know if you have any questions on complex numbers or any of the other things that we've talked about in algebra. And of course, if there is a math question that you're super curious about, let me know and we'll tackle it together. All right, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.